The Detrola Challenge, Episode 1, Meet the Patient. Hello there, I'm Professor Edney Rossi, and today I'm taking you on a journey, not just through time, but also inside a small tube radio full of history, rust, and personality. This is the Detrola Challenge. So here's the story. A friend of mine gave me a mission. Fix this old radio, Professor. And here it is, a Detrola Model 568. This is the kind of trouble we choose to get into. It's going to be tricky, frustrating, but also so much fun. To be honest, I've never repaired a tube radio in my life, but I said yes, because a good challenge is the kind where you learn and have fun, right? Now this old fella is almost 80 years old, and that's amazing. Can you imagine the stories it could tell? The Detrola 568 was made around 1946, shortly after World War II. It has a metal cabinet, a handle on top, and a look that reminds you of military equipment. And with good reason. Detrola, the company that made this radio, actually built a lot of electronics for the U.S. military during the war. After the war, they reused that rugged military style in their consumer radios. So yes, it looks like a field radio, but it was made for civilian use. It was the radio for the kitchen, the garage, the trailer, but it had that trust me soldier I can take it vibe. Inside, this little guy follows the same basic idea as the famous All-American Five, but with octal tubes, those big sturdy ones from the 1940s. We're talking about that kind of electronics where you can actually smell the heat rising when it's on. Let's go over the lineup. 12 SA7GT, the oscillator and mixer. This one converts the radio station frequency to the intermediate frequency. 12 SK7GT, EF amplifier, boosts that intermediate frequency signal. 12 SQ7GT does two jobs, detects the audio and preamplifies it. 50 L6GT, the power output tube, driving the speaker. And the 35Z5GT, which rectifies AC into DC for the rest of the circuit. All of these tubes run in series, straight from the power line, no isolation transformer. In Brazil, we call this kind of design a hot tail, Rabo Kente. But here in the U.S., there's a much more dramatic nickname, they call it the Widowmaker. Why? Because if you touch the wrong part, especially the back of the radio where the chassis might be live, you could get a nasty shock, and your spouse might need to go shopping for a black dress. It's no joke. Many radios like this could be lethal if plugged in the wrong way. That's why restoring these vintage beauties is not just nostalgic, it also demands respect and caution. So yes, hot tail, Widowmaker, either way, don't poke the back unless you know exactly what you're doing. Now, the speaker in this radio is a marvel of its own. It's a field coil speaker, meaning it doesn't use a permanent magnet. Instead, it has a field coil that does two things at once. It acts as the electromagnet for the speaker, and it also works as a filter choke for the power supply, helping to clean up the hum from the AC line. And the sound? Oh, the sound. This little speaker delivers a warm, cozy tone. It's not just something you hear, it's something you feel. A little hiss here, a pop there, and that thrill when you finally tune into an AM station on the round dial, glowing gently with that classic amber light. Now, about the condition this radio arrived in? Honestly, pretty good for an 80-year-old. But time has not been kind. Dried out components, decades of dust, a broken power cord, and the usual suspicion, if I plug it in as is, I'll get more smoke than sound. But don't worry, in this first episode, I'm just introducing the patient. In the next chapters, we'll dive in together, diagnose the issues, replace capacitors, check every part of the circuit, test the tubes, and if all goes well, hear that satisfying thump when we power it up. Do you love electronics? Do you enjoy vintage gear like I do? Then hit subscribe, ring the bell, and don't miss the next chapter of this tube-powered adventure. This was the first episode of the Detrola Challenge. Next time, we're getting our hands dirty, or rather, covered in solder. Until then, long live tube radios.